When we're going back to St. Luke for the fourth time, we're going back to St. Luke chapter 4. St. Luke chapter 4, verse number 18. St. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. You ought to say amen to the reading of God's word. This morning, we are in part four of our We're Anointed for this series. Uh, this morning, from the topic, blind spots. Blind spots, blind spots. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. The flower fades, the grass withers, but God, it is your word that stands the test of time. We pray, God, that you will continue to bless us, um, even in this moment, even in this time, as we are gathered around your word, even virtually. We pray, God, that your word will penetrate the very airwaves. We pray, God, that wherever we are, God, we pray, God, that you'll keep our signal strong, God, and our Wi-Fi strong, God, that we might be able um, to be locked and loaded, God, to be able to hear this word. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will rid us of every distraction, rid us of everything, God, that bids for our attention even at this moment. And, God, we pray, God, that you will speak to us clearly and succinctly as only you can. In Jesus' matchless name, amen, 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 amen. You can be seated wherever you are, wherever you are. Blind spots, blind spots, blind spots. As I've said, this is our series. We are anointed for this. We are anointed for this. And I just really believe as God has allowed us to be in this time and be in this moment, be in this year, uh, no matter what comes along, no matter what comes down the pipe, whenever it comes down the two, whether it be COVID-19 or whether it be all of this racial tension, um, God has prepared us for this and God has equipped us for this time in which we're living in. Uh, we ought to be continually praying for the spirit of the sons of Issachar uh, to where they understood the times and they knew what they ought to do. God has anointed us not just for a pandemic, not just for racial tension, uh, but God has anointed us because before any of this began, some of us had some issues. Some of us had some trouble. Some of us were going through some things and God has anointed us no matter what it is that we're going through. He has put his super on our natural so we'll be able to to be able to endure and be able to make it through whatever life throws our way. For the last several weeks, we've just been walking through this one verse of scripture and really been unpacking this verse and using other passages of scripture to try to make some sense. We started out saying that Jesus told us that the Lord had sent his spirit upon him and God had anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor. And we talked about how God has given us good news in bad times. Good news in bad times. Makes no difference how bad the news is. Makes no difference how CNN and Fox News try to scare the bejesus out of us. Uh, yet and still we can look at all of that bad news and still know that we have some good news. Then Jesus continued to say that not only God had anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor but also he went on to say that he had sent me to heal the broken hearted and we talked about how God has anointed Jesus and also anointed all of us to be wounded healers Jesus was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed God wounded him so he can heal us and so conversely God allows us to be wounded so we can be able to bring a healing healing to some other person or some other agency God allows us to be able to go through so we can be able to help and then on last week we went on with Jesus said to proclaim liberty to the captives to set at liberty those who are oppressed we put two of them together how Jesus said God anointed him to be able to liberate those that are captive and to liberate those that are oppressed and we told you that daddy makes a difference and it was really uh, my point on last week that there was so many people dealing with their daddy issues whether they were the daddy or whether they got daddied come on there's so many individuals that were dealing with daddy issues that they were captive and they were oppressed and God gave us a word of liberation God gave us a word of freedom and now we're going to continue to unpack this Luke 418 and we're going to try to tackle this phrase that Jesus said he said that the spirit of the Lord is upon me uh, not only to preach the gospel to the poor not only to set at liberty them that are bruised not only to 
liberate individuals that are oppressed, but also the recovering of sight to the blind, the recovering of sight to the blind. While, while I believe that Jesus' power, his anointing, his grace and the, 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 the supernatural ability that he flowed in and flows in even right now, even though I know that it can heal everyone, come on, that has a, a physical need as relates in our eyesight. He can heal uh, physical blindness as we'll see in the text today. But I believe even worse than being physically blind, I believe that when you and I have no vision, I believe that when you, when you and I are spiritually blind, that is worse than you. You and I being naturally blind. Can, can, can I tell you, I, I believe, I know that Jesus can heal us of our natural sight problems. And we'll see this in the text. But I just want to deal with it from, from both ends of the coin. I want to deal with it from both ends of the spectrum. That where he'll heal us from our natural blindness. And he'll also heal us from our spiritual blindness. Look what Helen Keller says. She said the only, well, he said, she says the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. The, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Can, can I tell you that if anyone can speak to this, it can be her. She said there are some individuals that can see. They got 20-20 vision. They got 20-20 focus. They can be able to see in the natural, but we don't have any vision. We can't see a thing further than just what the natural eye can see. What is vision? Vision is, is just simply the ability to think about and to plan the future with imagination or wisdom. That's what vision is, the way you can be able to think about and you can plan the future with imagination or wisdom. Can I ask you, even during this time, even during this season, what is the vision that God has given you? Is your vision just simply to hold on and to maintain until we get on the other side of this? Can I warn you and tell you one more time that when COVID-19 is over, there's going to be something else else can I remind you again and tell you again that when all of this racial tension when the protest stop when the marching stop come on when the legislation is finally passed can I tell you it's going to be something else and so I just cannot be hanging on to maintain but no I must be so thriving during this time I need to have the heart and the mind that God has given me that way I can see a better future I can see a better life I got to be able to see a better marriage I got to be able to see better children and God will give me vision vision the way I can be able to think about and to plan the future. I got to be able to mental, mental, I got to have a mental image of what it is that better looks like. Come on, that's what I'm, that's what I'm after today. I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm after a group of people that allow me to forge a mindset, to be able to forge a mental image in your mind the way you know you can do better, to let you know you can be better, to let you know you can be everything that God have called you to be. The proverb writer told us that when, when the people do not accept the divine guidance they, they, they run wild uh, you, you used to how it says that in King James it says where where there is no vision the people perish where there is no vision the people they die where there is no vision we stall out oh but I love what the new living the new living says when I don't accept divine guidance that's what God tries to do God tries to give me divine guidance the way I don't have to live this life according to my own understanding the way I don't have to live this life leaning to what it is that I believe but no he'll give me divine guidance but when I push off divine guidance when I would rather chillax than be able to grab divine guidance whenever it is I just want to pull on and do things that are important to me he said that people run wild but can I tell you that vision keeps you straight can I tell you that vision keeps you oh that's what gets you out to bed in the morning it's that vision that you have to know that it's not that job that you're working on that job is not your source but no God uses that as a resource but it's that vision the way you know you can work this plan and you keep on working this then God will open up a door over here. Come on, that's what makes you keep working at your marriage because you know things can be different. Things can be better. That's why you keep praying for your children because you got a vision. God has shown you something. Is there anybody watching me on YouTube right now that God has shown you something? Is there anybody on Facebook, YouTube, the Twitter? Come on, on our app. You can live stream on the app. Come on, is there anybody watching on the app right now that is saying that God has shown me something? I will not settle for what I see. I will not settle for what's happening right now. 
now. I will not settle for what the devil has given me. Oh, because God has shown me something. Oh, that's what brought those wise men from the east. Oh, because God has shown them something. They saw a star, a star way up in the sky. It will bring them goodness. And come on, they saw a star. I know it's not chromatized, but can I tell you that wise men still seek Jesus? Can I tell you that wise men still look for what God has shown? Is there anybody that's watching me right now that knows that God has shown them something? They got to be able to be able to see what God has shown me, and I got to go after it. Come on, type down the screen. Go after it. Go after it. Come on, you got to go after it. I know he showed you something, but you got to go after it. It's not just going to happen. You got to, you got to go you got to go after it. I heard I heard one person say the only thing, the only thing that is worse, oh my God, thank you, Miss Keller. The only thing worse of being blind is having sight but no vision. I heard someone else say, oh, that there, there is no one that is so blind as he who refuses to see. There are persons that refuse, that refuse to see. This is what Jesus talked about when he talked to the religious folk of his day. He said, you have eyes and you do not see. You have ears and you do not understand or you do not hear. Can I tell you, these individuals, they were blind guys. They knew it all, but yet and still there was something that they, that they were missing. They had some, some blind spots. Yes, they did. They knew the Torah. They knew the law. They knew it from cover to cover. They knew all the right things. To say all the right things to do but they have some blind spots can I tell you that persons that operate in blind spots come on we're, we're to a point to where we're being counterproductive we can know a thing but we won't obtain the thing because we have so many blind spots but today the Lord is going to help us with our blind spots yes he is look what John Maxwell said about blind spots he said blind spots are, are areas in the lives of people in which they continually do not see themselves or their situation realistically. He goes on to say, it is the inability of one to see themselves the way others see them. I know online that there's a there's a holy hush because there's a holy hush even in the essential workers even here they, this is a holy hush I know I know we're we're, we're trying to, trying to figure this thing out trying to see exactly what brother Maxwell is talking about huh? brother Maxwell says blind spots are areas in the lives of people in which they continually do not see themselves and all their situation realistically. I, I want to ask, maybe, maybe not you, maybe a friend, maybe you got a cousin, maybe you got a sister or brother or somebody you know, that where they, they don't look at their lives realistically. Everybody around them can tell them what's going on, but because of their blind spots, they do not see it realistically. Whenever it is that they have something going on in their life, whenever something is going negatively, whenever something is not progressing, whenever something is not advancing, it's always something else but the man or the woman in the mirror. Mr. Maxwell says it's the inability to see themselves. And here, this is what God helps us because some persons are operating in spiritual blindness. And can I tell you, if the devil can't get you to smoke come on if the devil can't get you to chew if the devil can't get you to drink if the devil can't get you in adultery if the devil can't get you in fornication fornication is still a thing can I tell you if the devil can't get you doing the sin the big sin come on can I tell you he can blind you and if the devil can't get you to get to the point to where you're suicidal if the devil can't get you to the point to where you're in and out he can be able to spiritually blind. I believe that that's one of the worst things that someone can be or something that someone can be is to be spiritually blind that God is trying to show us something God is trying to reveal something to us but because the devil has a fall because the devil has a mist in front of our eyes we can't see what it is that God that God is trying to do in our lives come on let me teach you something today listen to the language of the blind want to hear the language of the blind come on they, they, they say things like this I don't see that when, when, when someone is coming up to them and someone is confronting them or someone is checking them or someone, they're having a, a healthy conversation. Come on, the language of the blind is this. I don't see that. I don't see. I don't see. Come on, you. Come on. It's first kin, first cousin to this term that we've talked about several times called truthiness. Truthiness here. You can tell me the facts. You can tell me that it's, that it is, that it's raining outside. I can go out there and it'd be a torrential downpour. But truthiness say, I don't care what you say. Yeah, it's raining, but I don't believe it's raining. Come on. That's a, I, I, I don't see. I don't see that. Come on. What else? The language of the blind. They say things like this. I don't see it that way. That, that's how you say it. That's how you see it, but I don't, I don't, I don't see it that way. 
And then when they really get to the point where their back is against the wall, don't got nowhere else to go, they'll just be like, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Whatever you're saying, I just don't get it. I mean, this is the language of the blind. Maybe you got a friend. Maybe you know somebody that talked the language. You didn't know that. You thought they were talking ghetto. They talking the language of the blind. You, didn't, you thought they were talking Ebonics. No, they speak in blind language. This is how, this is how blind folk talk. Look, let me, let me keep on going. Look, the, the, look, look at this right here. Look at this quote. The most common blind spot is believing others have them, but you don't. That's, that's, that's the most common blind spot. They're where everybody else got them, but not me. Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I rest you? Can I, can I sure you up? Everybody, everybody, everybody got some blind spots. Come on. Can, can, I, can I help you right here? Everyone has some blind spots. Everyone has areas in their lives that they don't see. And what God does, God put people in our lives, and God gives us the Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us and convict us, and he'll give us the Holy Spirit that let us know, mm -mm, that's not what you're supposed to do. Mm -mm, you're not supposed to go that way. Mm -mm, that's not how you're supposed to handle that. And he He'll put people around us and he'll give us a word the way he can be able to shine the light on our blind spots. But the question is, whenever it is that God shows you your blind spot, whenever God shows me my blind spot, what am I going to do with it? Everybody got blind spots. Everybody got some places in their life they're a little rough around the edges. But I, whenever God show me a thing, I got to be able to deal with a thing. Let me tell you, keep on telling you about the language of the blind. You know, you want let me give some indicators on how a person may be living in a blind spot they do life alone they, they do life by themselves they they are they are lone rangers they do life alone but you, you know they, they reject the offer of support they don't they reject person being in their corner because they want to do it their way they want to do things according to their plan they want to do things according to their agenda and they pull away these are individuals that are living in the blind spot they don't talk to anybody about what it is that's going on they they they're very they're very private they vary to the point to where they 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 withdraw because of most of the times when persons withdraw and most times when persons have glaring blind spots in their life, they pull away from anybody that will tell them something different than what they want to hear. Oh, I'm preaching it here. They, they pull away from anybody who will tell them something counter from what they want to hear. They do life by themselves. Come on, let me tell you another, another indicator of person. Uh, maybe, maybe it's somebody sitting on your couch. Maybe it's somebody that's in your, that, that maybe there's a meeting in your bedroom right now with, with, with a person right now that got, got some blind spots can i tell you that, that you know how else they get you may have some blind spots being insensitive to our negative impact on others we, we, we're insensitive we, we, we can we can we can say things a certain way handle situations a certain way we can be able, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can talk to individuals and converse with individuals and they can tell us, you know, that was offensive. You know, you, you, I don't know why you said it that way. I don't know why you did it that way. And we'll say, well, that's your problem. We, we, we like hanging under the umbrella of saying, I'm just real. You're right. You real rude. Come on, that's right. You are real. You're real rude. You just because you're, you you can be authentic. You can be genuine. But we have to, as people of God, as believers, we must be sensitive to how other people are receiving what it is that we're giving them. We cannot be insensitive to our negative impact on others and push off how they're feeling and push off what it is that they see in our life as if they got the problem. Can I tell you? I'm talking about people with that that they got some blind spots. We 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 push off and we say, oh. Well, whatever i don't want to i don't want to hear that i'm not going to entertain that i know I don't, I'm, I'm gonna do me i'm gonna live my life i don't care what nobody say can i tell you that's the language of of the blind let me keep on going because it gets better they, they, they have a i know attitude the persons who who have blind spots in their life you try to talk to them i know you, you, you try to talk to them and before you even finish your sentence i know can I tell you, can I give you a moment of transparency as a pastor? One of the most aggravating things to me is, is when I'm trying to give instruction or I'm trying to give count. You come set a whole appointment with me and come sit down and take up my time and come on, sit down across from my desk and, and, and you do more talking than me. Can I tell you? I, come on, I need to pay you $50. Can I, can I tell you? And anyone don't pay me nothing. I'm just saying. I, I need to set the appointment. You need to sit at the desk. Come on. Because you're talking more than me. It's very aggravating whenever there's somebody can have the wisdom that you need. Somebody can have the insight 
light that you need. Somebody can have the direction that you need. And you just talking. You so quick to talk, so quick to cut off, so quick. So what I do, I just sit there. And I just, all right, you, you got all the answers then. I, I start studying on the slide. Come on, I start reading something else. Can I tell you that what persons do? People who have blind spots and don't want to correct their blind spots. They always approach situations with an I no attitude because they never feel like they're wrong. Come on, that goes to the next one. They never able to accept fault. Come on, people who live in blind spots. Come on, I know you didn't come for this today at the virtual worship experience, but this is for a friend. This is for your neighbor. Come on, ease up a little bit. It's not for you. It's for your cousin now. Come on, can I tell you that the persons that walk in blind spots, they never, they, I like to call it, they can never take an L. Come on, that L be like, lay down, lay down, take this L. Can I tell you that the person that got blind spots, they're never able to accept fault. Even when they wrong, they got their hand in the cookie jar. They got the crumbs around their mouth, and they'll still say, it wasn't me. Come on here, Shaggy. They'll say, it wasn't me. If you can put your hand on me, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't me. But can I tell you, these are people and persons that live with blind spots. I got two more, and I'm blazing. Can I tell you, persons that walk in blind spots and live in blind spots, they are, vo they are, they are avoiding difficult conversation and confrontation. Persons that have blind spots, they avoid. As I said, they are elusive. As I said, they withdraw. As I said, they're seclusive because they know that the difficult conversation and confrontation is necessary for growth. Can I tell you that the only way you can mature in the things of God, the only way you can develop in the things of God, the only way you can be able to get everything that God has for you, you got to be able to deal with the real you. You got to be able to be able to take an inward plunge on the inside and say, God, show me me. God, don't show me, God, what people did. God, show me me. God, don't show me what he said and she said and I thought that I heard, but God, show me me. And that's the only way you're going to be able to grow. And here in persons who are just perpetually love staying blind, come on, this is what else they do. They write all people that do not agree with their ways and their methods. They just write them off as haters. They just write them off as people who don't want to see them expire, excel. Want to write them off as people that don't want to see them do what it is that they're trying to do. They just write them off. And here these are persons that have blind spots. But I just believe there's a group of people that's watching me online. I just believe there's a group of people that's listening to me right now that say, bro, pastor, I want to deal with my blind spots. Bro, pastor, I want to be, I don't want to be, I want to be able to hear. I want to be able to see what it is that God is saying to me today so I can rid of my blind spots so I can be able to handle everything that God has for me. I'm so glad you do because Jesus said that the spirit of the Lord was upon him and he has anointed him to preach the gospel to the poor that said that liberty them to the bruised and the recovering of sight to the blind. God getting ready to give us our sight back and in order for God to give us our sight back we're going to take a look at a particular character that got his sight back and he showed us how he got his sight back. If you want your sight back, if you want to operate in the vision that God has for you, number one, you need intense transition. You need intense transition. Yeah, yes, you do. You need intense transition. You'll see it here in a moment because here, look at Mark chapter 10, verse 46. You need intense transition. Intense transition is this. Look, 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 look what it says. It says, and they, they came to Jericho. And as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd. Here's Jesus got his mind on his mission and his mission on his mind. The Bible says as they came to Jericho and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples. This is very this is very interesting because you just can't just park in one gospel narrative. I've taught you this. Come on you can put them together and be able to see what it is that God is saying holistically. You can get the picture that God desires for us to get. So when you study Mark and you study Matthew's account of this same instance the Bible tells us that the healing took place as they were leaving Jericho Jesus is getting ready to heal someone but here according to Mark and according to Matthew it happened when Jesus was leaving Jericho but Luke said it happened when they were entering into the city come on Matthew and Mark said when he was leaving Jericho Luke says it was because the healing took place as he was coming into Jericho oh my goodness the Bible has a a contradiction no it's not a contradiction just simply an apparent contradiction and you got to be able to dive into it further to be able to see exactly what it is that God is saying at this particular time there were two Jerichos it was the old Jericho and it was the new Jericho the old Jericho that you and I know about in, in Joshua where the people of God marched around the wall and the walls came what tumbling down that is the old Jericho it lie in 
in ruins. But now the individuals that were in power, they had built a new Jericho. So literally there were two Jerichos. It literally was an old Jericho and literally it was a new Jericho. But here even as Jesus is traveling and Jesus is leaving Jericho, he's leaving one Jericho and going into another Jericho. He's leaving one old Jericho and coming to another Jericho. He is in the middle of some transition. That, that's what it is that Jesus is doing. I just believe that Jesus is showing us how to do life and how to do what it is that we need to do. If you want to be intentional about removing your blind spot, you got to be intentional about intense, come on, transition. Yes, sir. What, what am I trying to tell you? You have to tell. This, here's a tale of two cities, an old city and a new city. Here you got to, you got a tale of two cities, an old, the old and the new. Come on, you think I'm still talking about Jericho, but I'm, I'm talking about now where it is that God is trying to take you. God is trying to take you from the old to the new. Yes, sir. That's what transition is. Transition is being able or transition is being in between the old and the new. Come on, that's where somebody's at right now. I'm not talking about a physical location. I'm talking about where you are in your spirit. You're in between the old and the new. Come on, that's what transition is. Here Jesus was between the old Jericho and the new Jericho. He was showing us how to be able to transition in our life. Can I tell you that transition is just simply a process or a period of changing from one state or one condition to another. Come on, that's what God wants to do. If you really want to deal with your blind spots, you really got to be intentional about your transition, about this process that God is trying to take you from one state to another. Yes, sir. That's what that's what Jesus is showing us here. I just believe he's showing us that he's in the middle of a transition. And here, you and I, we too are in the middle of a transition when we're trying to deal with our blind spots. I love what Dr. William Bridges said, the author of Managing Transitions, Making the Most of Change. Listen to what he says about transition. I've taught you this before, but I'm going to give it to you again. He said, transition is a three-phase process. Letting go, the neutral zone, and the new beginning. See, we think, see, this is where we, this is where we mess up. We think when we, when we, try, to, when we try to change a thing, we just try to change a thing because we're tired of it. It's, it's, where, it's where you see, I, I can use the illustration, it's, it's where you see poor leadership. Poor leadership just fire everybody. <laughs> Just don't fire everybody. Come on, you. you just don't go walk in. Everybody fire. Everybody get out of here. Everybody. Yeah, no, that's not, that's not leadership. That's not how you change a thing. If you want to change or transition a thing or a group of people, there are, there are three phases. I agree with this. There's a, first of all, a letting go. And there are some people right now, you're stuck in transition because you're afraid to let go. You're stuck in transition right now because when, you, when you're holding on, you're holding on to your safety net. You're holding on to your little security blanket. You're holding on to what was. You're holding on to that idea. You're holding on to that thing that you thought that God said. You're holding on to that thing that didn't materialize, didn't manifest and you're in transition. But whenever you let things go, this is where people mess up. Put it back up there for me if it's not up there. Thank you so much. Whenever it is that you let go and this is where people get afraid when they get in the neutral zone. Because when you're in the neutral zone, you're, you're too far away from your security, but you're not yet to the manifestation. You're just kind of stuck in the middle. And see, this is where people get so nervous and people, they get so afraid and people, they get so fixated in the way they say, well, I, I don't know, it's not happening fast enough. It's not developing fast enough. And so they go back to what the familiar, and that's why, that's why that sister keep going back to that brother that keep cheating on her because she, she, she's used to the familiar. That's why a person will keep going back to an abusive or a bad relationship because they're used to going back to what the, the familiar. Oh, but when you're in a neutral zone, you got to be able to trust God. I'm not going to move. I'm I'm going to stay here till God say so. I'm going to stay where God put me. I'm going to keep on. I'm going to stay patient. I'm going to stay available. I'm going to stay teachable. I'm going to stay trainable until God tell me otherwise. And when you're transitioning, you go from letting go to the neutral zone to what else? The new beginning. <laughs> Come on here. I'm trying to tell you. You got to be You got to be intense about transition. You got to be intense about it. And that's what God is saying. If you hold on during this season, there's a new beginning coming. If you continue to be faithful, if you continue to do what it is, 
is that God has called you to do. There's a new beginning coming. Come on, it look like things are going bad. It looks like things are going south. But God is saying, I got to let that other stuff die off. I got to let that other stuff break off. I got to let those other options deteriorate so you can know that nobody did this but me. Nobody going to get the glory but me. Nobody going to be able to say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, you'll be able to say, I know, come on here, it wasn't my friend. Come on, it wasn't my neighbor. Come on, it wasn't this person or that person. God said, I'm getting ready to do a new beginning. Oh, I heard Solomon say, he said, God will make all things beautiful according to his time. Oh, there's a time to die. There's a time to live. There's a time to gain. There's a time to lose. There's a time to get. There's a time to give. God saying everything, there's a season. You got to hold on to God. Change your season. Come on, type down the screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, a change is coming. Come on, your deliverance is coming. Come on, your new season is coming. Your transition is coming. But you got to hold on. I'm preaching already. Here. Hurry up. Hurry up. I'm trying to tell you about how to get rid of these blind spots. You got to be intense about your, your transition here. The Bible says, Mark 10, 46. Can I go further? Look, look, what, it says. look what it says. As he was leaving Jericho, with the disciples, there was a great crowd. Of course, there's a great crowd. This is a, it's the middle of the Passover, Passover season. Got all these folk, all these folk following him. Jesus had just raised Lazarus from the dead. There's a plenty of folk coming with them. They're navigating through this Jericho road. You know the, the, the story that Jesus told about that brother on the Jericho road. In other words, this is a dangerous road. This is a road that is not, you're not going to be able just to see everything that's going to happen and be able to know everything that's going to happen. This is a dangerous road. And so what is my point? Sometimes following Jesus things get a little intense. Sometimes following Jesus is not going to be just tiptoeing through the tulips. But no, sometimes following Jesus is going to be it's going to be some trouble. It's going to be intense. And the Bible says they had a great crowd with them. Mark 10, 46 says Bartimaeus, who was a, was a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, it says he was sitting by the roadside. Good God, this brother Bartimaeus at Jesus going into Jericho. He's leaving the old and going into the new. Here you see this brother by the name of Bonimaeus. He was a blind beggar. This brother Bonimaeus. I love Bonimaeus, but, but Bonimaeus is in a season in his life that maybe you and I can identify with. As Bonimaeus is blind, that's already some trouble, but now the Bible also tells us that he's a beggar. But look at what this brother name means. His, his name means, of course, he's the son of Timaeus, but also it means honorable. Son of the esteem, son of one esteem. Bonimaeus is a son of someone that's esteemed, but he's, he's blind and he's a beggar. Have you ever had a season in your life where you wasn't living up to your name? <laughs> Here, Bartimaeus is, was, was trained. Bartimaeus is the son of someone that's esteemed, the son of someone that is honorable in this season. He's, his, his life, because of his condition, it have deduced him to begging. Because of his condition, it have deduced him to being something that here it is that I'm sure he never signed up for. But here, Bartimaeus, he is in this pitiful condition. His brother was blind, and we know we've talked in depth about blindness during that time in the ancient world. Blindness was either caused by birth defects or injury or disease or these sanitary conditions. This brother was blind and oftentimes when persons were blind, if they didn't have a support system, if they didn't have someone that can help them, they were deduced to begging. So this brother was just sitting on the side of the road and just looking for a handout. Oh, but Bonimaeus was sitting at the right place at the right time. Can I tell you that whenever it is you're intentional about dealing with your blind spot, there must be some intentional placement. Yes, sir. See, you, if you, if you want some help you got to be at the right place where the help is coming come on if you desire to be better you got to posture yourself in an environment of better come on if you want to be better you got to be around people that stretch you you got to be around people that challenge you you got to be around people that don't be satisfied with your sorriness but no speak in your life and say you can be better speak in your life and tell you no you can pull up yourself and you can do what it is that God have called you to do the Bible says in Mark 10 46 this brother was sitting by the roadside Oh, come on. I believe Bonimaeus was a little slick. I believe he knew that it was Passover season. I believe he knew that it was going, the person was going to be making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem for the Passover. And he said, Look, can I tell you, the church folk going to church, and they, they're, they're, a little more, they're a little more apt to helping me. They're a little more sensitive to my plight and my need. Or at least it was during that time. I don't know how it is now. Because when we get on the highway and person standing down in the bottom of the highway, we just keep on looking straight. We act like we don't see him. Come on. I know we got, I know that, that wrong 
Rona real. I know you don't want it, but you wasn't giving nobody nothing before Rona. Come on. You you blaming it on the Rona right now, but come on, you need Milly Vanilli was here. They say blaming it on the rain. It didn't matter what was going on. You're not helping nobody. It don't matter what's going on. You weren't assisting nobody. But here Bartimaeus said, I'm gonna strategically, intentionally place myself right here where I believe that people will help me. Oh, come on, what am I trying to tell you? When the word of God is coming for, you got to put yourself in a posture. Is that time for you to be grilling right now? Is that time for you to be at the beach right now? Is that time for you to be planning this and doing that? But no, whenever it is that you need help, whenever it is you got a blind spot, you need to intentionally place yourself under the hammer of the word of God because I'm saying, God, I need you to make me and mold me. I need you to change me. God, I, I'm a mo God, I need you. I'm the pot. You're the potter. I'm the clay. And God, I need you to help me. Look what Isaiah said. I'm trying to hurry. Look, look what Isaiah said in Isaiah 55 and 6. He says, seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he's near. Come on, in these last 15 weeks, how many times have you sought the Lord? Come on, this time that we have not been gathered together physically, how many times have you been intentional about bombarding heaven, about everything that's going on? How many times have you been intentional about getting the word and getting in your study and getting to the point to where you can be able to hear what it is that God is saying to you in this season? You got to call upon the name of the Lord. Oh, this brother, he intentionally placed himself. Oh, but Bonamaeus, he encouraged me. He taught me how to deal with my blind spot because I see thirdly, I see an increase despite deficit. Oh, boy, you preaching. I see an increase despite deficit. About three, only three of y'all gonna get it. I promise you. On three y'all gonna get it. Look, look, blind Bonamaeus, he, he, he's sitting at the right place at the right time. Look what it says. Mark 10, 47 says, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, I, I see an increase despite deficit. What am I telling you? We call him blind Bonamaeus. He couldn't see Jesus, but the text says, he, come on, talk to me. He heard that Jesus was passing by. Come on, I see an increase despite this deficit. He had his brother couldn't see that was a deficit. He couldn't see that was a deficiency. But yet and still, oh, by the man, he says, my spidey senses are going crazy. Something is going on. Come on, I don't know if they were, I don't know if they were talking about Jesus. I don't know what it is that he heard. Oh, but he heard, he said, who that is? Oh, he said, who is that? Well, who y'all talking about? Is that Jesus of Nazareth? He heard, oh, come Come on, what am I trying to tell you? If you want to be intentional about your blind spot, if you want to see, if you want to do, if you want to conquer everything that God has for you, stop complaining about what you don't have and start increasing with what you do have. I know you broke right now, but come on, God gave you social media. Come on, you can push your product online. You can, if you, God has given you a dream, God given you a vision, use YouTube, use Facebook and stop pushing fear. Stop sharing CNN. Stop sharing Fox News and start sharing your business. Y'all that go help me here. Stop talking about what you don't have. Clean your credit up. Stop talking about what you do have. Work on yourself. Come on here. We ought to do some things even when you're in a deficit. There's some things that you can do. And God said, if you'll do what it is that you can do, he said, then I'll do what only I can do. Come on, you got to learn how to increase even when you're deficit. Oh, I'm preaching here. Let me go. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. I got to go. <laughs> got to go. I got to go. The Bible says this brother. I'm going to skip all that. The Bible says this brother. This brother was sitting at the right place. He had, a, he had an intentional placement. Well, thank you, Bonnie. Because Bonnie showed me I can increase even when I'm deficit. I believe that's a word for somebody right now because this is a tough season. I believe that's a word for somebody right now. Some folk are lonely. Some folk are depressed. Some folk are just going over and over and over in their mind. Everything that they're going through. And God sent this word to you right now and told you what we told Moses. Stand at the Red Sea. Use what you got in your hand. Come on. Stop complaining about what you don't have. And you, you use what you got. I got to get out of here. Verse 47. Mark 10, 47 says, he began to cry out and say when he heard it was Jesus he began to cry out and say oh I almost preached holler holler if you hear me I almost, I almost preached holler holler at your boy huh? I almost preached the Bible said this brother began to cry out his brother began to cry and say Jesus son of David have mercy on me Lord have mercy this is the first time that we see this phrase in the gospel of Mark oh this is the first time that we see this tag this is the first time we see this handle this is the first time that some 
someone called Jesus the son of David. Come on, what am I trying to tell you? If you need something from God, sometimes you got to do some things that nobody else is doing. Sometimes if you need, come on, if you need something different from God, you got to learn how to start doing some things different. Come on, if that that, that little warmed over, now lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wait, I pray the Lord my dumb soul to take. Come on here, you, you've been saved 25 years. You're still talking about not lay me down to sleep. Come on, that's why you don't got no breakthrough. That's why you don't got no power. Every now and then you got to say, shot out of the bullshit. Come on, you're like, help me here. Every now and then you got to do some things that you can't do. Every now and then you got to learn how to war with the Lord. Every now and then you got to say, oh, 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 Lord. Every now and then you got to call on the name of the Lord. Oh, by the man, he used a term that nobody else used. He called on the Lord. Oh, because God, had he needed God in a way that he never needed him before. Hold that brother. He did something that hadn't been done. I'm hurrying here. His brother called out. Come on, I'm trying. I want to I want to poke you today. I want to prod you today. Come on, I want to push you today to do some things you never done. If you're tired of being depressed, why don't you turn your plate down? Why don't you go on a fast? Why don't you begin to pray? Why don't you turn that television off? Why don't you pick up the word of God? Why don't you get off social media? Why don't you do something you never done before to get something God never gave you before? I'm preaching in here. Let me go. I see this brother, this brother, this brother intentionally put himself in a place. He began to call on the name of the Lord. But look, I see something else, and this is this will be good. We're gonna come back to it, but I, I'm gonna hit it right now. I see some inconvenient involvement right here in the text. I'm not making none of this up. When I start making it up, you can church hop online. If you start making stuff up, you just go on push pay us and then go on church hop and go on to the other churches you want to go to. But, but, but when I start making stuff up, as long as I'm in the text, as long as I'm in the wood, you better stay there right there. Lord, I'm going to shut your Wi-Fi down. Look, look, look. I see some inconvenient <laughs> involvement. Look, it's right here. Look at, look at Mark 10, 48. It says, and many said, hey, Jesus, this brother calling you. And, 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 and many said, Hey, 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 come on, let me help you, Barnabas. Let me help you get to Jesus. And, and many said, oh, oh, this, this is how you do it. This is what this woman did. This is what the other guy did to get a breakthrough. No, no, and the Bible says, and many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. M many rebuked him and told him to shut up, that he, he had become a nuisance to them. They was resenting the fact that his brother is possibly going to slow Jesus down. And instead of helping him, oh, they tried to silence him. I see some inconvenient involvement. Oh, these are the followers of Christ. Oh, but because they, won't, they don't want to be inconvenienced, they tell Bonamaeus to be quiet. These are the followers of Christ. But because they don't want to be inconvenienced, they don't tune in online because they don't want to be inconvenient or oh, they don't sow, they don't give they don't sow in, they don't pray because they don't want to be inconvenient can I tell you to be a follower of Christ it's a call to be inconvenient come on here, God is not calling you to comfort God is not calling you to ease God is not calling you to be to a point where everything is going your way but no, God say every now and then at 2 o'clock in the morning, oh you got to be able to get on your face and talk to me every now and then you got to be able to take that nice vehicle he bless you with, go by and pick somebody up every now and then you got to take that nice home that you have and somebody that got kicked out they out and you got to let somebody stay in your spare bedroom for a few days every now and then you got to be inconvenient oh but the people of God we don't want to be inconvenient the people of God we want our best life now we want to name it and claim it blab it and grab it call it and haul it oh but the devil is a liar every now and then you got to take that phone call how can you be a child of God that's in the world how can you be a child of God that you want God to use you you saying use me Lord use me Lord, and then when persons call you, you don't even pick the phone up. You say, oh, I ain't got time for that right now. How is it you praying that God use you? And when people are texting you, people that need encouragement, I need to be encouraged myself. I need something myself. No, you need to be able to be inconvenient sometimes. God desires to use you, and God will never use a man greatly before he breaks him greatly. Can I tell you, he'll wound you greatly if he desires to use you greatly. You got to be inconvenient every, every now and then. The Bible said they rebuke his brother and told him to shut up. Oh, but I'm so glad that Bonamaeus was not Susie sensitive. I'm so glad that Bonamaeus was not super Samuel sensitive. Oh, but no Bonamaeus. The Bible said, I see something else. I see some insistent expectancy. They told Bonamaeus to shut up. Oh, but verse 48 said, but he cried out the more. Oh, they told him to be quiet. And Bonamaeus cried out even the more. Who am I talking to today? I just believe that you're allowing the noise of people. You're allowing the rebellion 
rebuke of people. You're allowing the fact that people look down on you. You're allowing the fact that people don't accept you. You're allowing the fact that people don't endorse you. to call you to go in a shell. to call you to stop believing their report. Oh, but I bind every word, curse, that person has spoken over your life. I bind every hex, every spell. Right now in the name of Jesus. And you listening in the ear. What people got to say about you. You got to learn how to cry out even the more. This brother Bartimaeus was insistent with expectancy. You know why he kept on calling? Because he knew Jesus could do something. You know why he kept on calling on the Lord? Because he knew that nothing happens unless you call him. Oh, I'm talking to somebody today. God wants to do something in your life. But you got to be insistent. You got to keep calling him knowing that he's going to do something. He's going to be able to bring me out. He's going to deliver me. He's going to be. Oh, Bartimaeus said I got to be persistent. I got to keep on pushing. I got to keep on praying. I got to keep on calling. I don't care what people say. Oh my goodness, I'm going to get out of here. Can I tell you, look what this great man of God said about persistence. Can I tell you that you'll never know him until you know him as a necessity. Come on here, you wonder why folks seem like they know, be- know Jesus better? Oh, because he hadn't, gotten to, he hadn't gotten to be a necessity to you. You won't know him in the way or the magnitude that you need to know him because you take it or leave it. Oh, because you don't, you don't have, you come to him only when you need him. Oh, but can I tell you when he's a necessity? Can I tell you when he's not, when you don't got to plan B when you don't have any other option and that's when you'll be able to know him in the power of his resurrection that's when you'll be able to know him in the fellowship of his suffering you got to be able to have some you got to be intentional and you got to be intense about your expectancy you got to keep on asking until you receive you got to keep on seeking until you find it you got to keep on knocking until the door is open oh I love Bonamayas because he told he said I got to keep on calling Jeremiah 29 13 said you will seek me and find me this is what God said you'll seek me and you'll find me he said when you seek me with all your heart come on here you want to know where he's at come on he's there waiting on you he's there wooing you and calling you and telling you you got to have some expectation Psalm 34 and 6 said this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble yes sir oh you ain't cried oh you haven't called on the name of the Lord you don't want to be delivered yet you don't want your marriage better yet you don't want your child saved yet come on you don't want to be you want a financial breakthrough yet oh because you still just are acting like this thing just got to happen but you got to call on the name of the Lord oh I love what David said David said I had fainted unless I had believed Psalm 27 13 I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living Bartimaeus was blind but he said I know I can see the goodness of the Lord y'all missed it can I tell you that you got to call on the name of the Lord even when you're blind even when you can't see it to say to God, I know there's something that you want to show me. I, I just believe Bonamayas kept calling. He was persistent about his calling. If, I believe if Bonamayas could sing, I believe, I believe Bonamayas would strike up a song and sing something like this. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I'm crying, Savior, Savior, hear my. y'all to call on the Lord come on y'all to call on the Lord come on y'all to say Lord don't pass me by come on is there anybody in here is there anybody that's watching online the way you saying Lord I need you to come my way don't pass me by I need you right now I need you in a real and I need you in a fresh way is there anybody on YouTube that say Lord if you're passing my way, I want you to hear my humble cry. And because Bonamayas cried, because Bonamayas called on the Lord, I see that the Lord, the Lord had an intentional delay. Look at Mark 10, 49. The Bible says he called on Jesus, and the Bible says, and Jesus, Jesus stopped. Y'all, they gonna help me preach. And I tell you, he called on the Lord, and because he called on the Lord, he stopped the Lord right in his tracks. Because he called on the Lord 
the Lord stopped in his track. Can I tell you that he called on the Lord and the Lord was on his way to Jerusalem. But because Bartimaeus cried, because Bartimaeus needed his help, because Bartimaeus needed his assistance, the Lord stopped in his track. Come on, I'm looking for somebody today that will make up in their mind that when you'll say, Lord, I need you to stop by my house. I need you to let your Shekinah glory, I need you to let it hit my home. I need you to let your cabal, I need you to let the weight of your presence, let it engulf my mind. I need to allow your presence to break off all my fear, to break off all my doubt, to break off all my anxiety. Is there anybody that got a call? They've got a call out for the Lord. I heard I heard Jesus say, if you call on me, that's why I came. Because the spirit, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal all of the brokenhearted. He has sent me to set at liberty them that are bruised. And to recover the sight of the blind. Come on here somebody. The Lord trying to give you back everything everything that you lost. He didn't say to give sight. He said to recover sight. And here Bonamaeus, even when he came to Jesus, Jesus said, what do you want? And he said, I want my sight to be restored. In other words, Bonamaeus, he once had sight, but now because of trouble, he lost his sight. He once had sight, but because of life, he lost his sight. But is there anybody right now that want everything that the Lord said belong to you. You may have lost your joy. You may have lost your peace. But I heard, I heard David say, I want it all back. I want my joy back. I want my peace back. I'm going to pursue until I get it back. I'm going to pursue until I get my breakthrough. I'm going to pursue until I get another dose of the anointing. Until I get another dose of the power. Goodbye, truth and love. God bless you today. But the Lord said, I'm getting ready to give it back. I'm getting ready to help you out. But before we give it to you, he's going to allow somebody to help you. I see the inclusion of the insulters. The same one that insulted him. The same one that told him to shut up. The same ones that said, leave him alone. The Bible says in verse 49, he, Jesus said, call him here. And that's what I came to tell you. Whenever you call on him, now he's calling you. You were crying out to him. And now he's crying out to you. And Jesus said, call him here. So they called the blind man. And they said to him, listen, I'm going to tell you the truth and love. Take courage. Stop being afraid. For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. Neither he's given us anxiety. But he's given us power. He's given us a love. And he's given us a sound mind. He's telling me to be bold. He's telling me to be courageous. I heard. Y'all don't want me to preach today. I said, I heard. I heard, I heard Joshua. I heard, I heard, I heard. I said, I heard, I heard, I heard. I heard Joshua say that the Lord told Joshua, he said, be strong and very courageous. And he said, I'm going to allow you to have good success. Come on, I'm speaking to somebody right now that's too scared to leave your home. I'm speaking to somebody right now that's too scared to go to the store. I'm speaking to somebody right now who allowed fear to grip your heart. But the Lord told me to tell you. He said, be encouraged. He said, take on that courage. Put down fear and take up courage. He said, take courage. He said, stand up. Come on, my blind spot people. He said, stand up. You got to get from being down. And you got to stand up for the Lord is calling you. He told the same ones that pushed him out to pull him in. The same one that told him to shut up. He told him to be able to bring them in. I'm talking to somebody right now. They got pain from your past and pain from people that pushed you down. The Lord told me to tell you that the same one that pushed you down, I mean the same one that pulled you up, the same one that said I don't need you in my life, I mean the same one that'll say you're a necessity in my life. I heard 
I heard the songwriter say that the stone that the builders rejected have now become the head of the corner. Can I tell you that your rejection is not your dejection, but your rejection is your elevation. I tell you, your rejection is not for you to be down, not for you to be discouraged, but the Lord, I feel like preaching in here. I say the Lord. He gonna take your rejection and gonna say, I want you, I need you in his next move. The Bible said that he will in the book of Psalms, verse 23, chapter 23, verse 5. He said that he will prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy. He will, he'll prepare a table. They said no, but God will make them say yes. They say no, but God will make them turn their mind. They'll say no, but God will prepare a table. God will look out for you, even in the midst of all of your trouble. Bonamaeus heard that Jesus needed him, and the Bible says he threw off his garment. He took immediate action. I'm talking to somebody. You need to take immediate action. You need to stop pouting and start pursuing. You need to stop complaining and start calling. You got to stop crying and say, Lord. If you want me, I'm going to come. Look about truth and love. I'm leaving for real this time. Partner Mayors came, and I see an immediate transformation. Verse 52 say Jesus. He said, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And the Bible said, and immediately, he recovered his sight. When you make a move in faith, immediately, you'll get your sight. When you make a move of faith, Immediately, you'll get back your vision. I'm getting ready to start that business. Immediately, my marriage getting better. Immediately, my money getting better. Immediately, my child gonna get saved. Immediately, exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think. I said immediately, do with your blind spots and give God some praise. Where you at? I said, give him some praise right where you are. I said, give him some praise right where you are. I said, he's going to immediately, he's going to immediately turn it around. I'm looking for a turnaround. I'm looking for a breakthrough. I'm looking for the Lord to take my pain and give me his purpose. I'm looking for the Lord to take my pain and give me his power. I heard. I heard David say that a weeping only endures for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Is there anybody watching? The way you can make up in your mind, I won't let go until it bless me. Come on, Jacob. I won't let go until it bless me. I'm going to hold on until I get my breakthrough. I'm going to hold on until I get my breakthrough. I'm going to hold on until it changes my I'm going to hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Say yes. Say yes. Yeah. I don't want me to preach. 